newspapers uh, report, media reports, and, uh, NPR and so forth, that there was sort of a broad agreement reached. Um, that's always a good thing. There are details to be worked out. Maybe you could explain to our viewers uh, exactly what's happening, happening procedurally in terms of what does that agreement mean? And obviously there's quite a bit of work left to be done before I think it's 12.59 p.m. Monday when everything has to be done. So tell our viewers, bring our viewers up to on where we're at on all that. Well, that, that agreement included, um, there was a variety of things. One of them is uh, there was a $4 billion in spending, $4 billion in tax cuts, and then $4 billion, $4.172 billion, I believe it is, left for next year, unspent. And so the $4 billion of spending, by the way, when you spend money on a tax cut, uh, that is also called spending. It's kind of one of those unique kinds of things. And so, uh, but on the spending side, $1 billion for education, $1 billion for health and human services, and then the largest amount, well, there's about $600 million for a property tax uh, rent um, improvement or relief there of some degree. Don't know all the details yet. And then also a tax cut. So right now, the actually the tax bill is the one that is closest to agreement. Uh, and in that particular bill, there would be permanent ongoing tax relief. And it would include several things. One of them, which has been worked on and wanted for a very long time, is full elimination of the tax on social security income. That's a really big deal all over the state of Minnesota. So that's one really, really big part of that. Then there would also be a tax cut of the first tier and that isn't um, all, and what I'm saying they're close, it's the old adage, uh, close still isn't done, but I'm reporting where it's at at this time. And so we have that, there's some property tax relief. And then I think that those areas, there's some other smaller pieces of it as well. So they're working on that right now. And the education one uh, proposal from the Senate, by the way, uh, is literacy. Um, minimum of $50 million for literacy. I don't people know 40% of our kids in public school cannot read at grade level. And if you can't read at grade level, you are greatly hampered in being able to successful in life, not just in school. Senator Chamberlain, this has been uh, chair of the education committee, big thing. So to be able to have literacy money where we help teachers teach better, learn more tools, more focus, more staff time, more help for them in regards to literacy. And the other thing is the, it's called the um, cross subsidy. And that is where the requirements for students that need extra help, um, it's supposed to be covered by funding from the federal government and the state government, but they're taking from their other general fund. And so that's called cross subsidy. <clears throat> so a very, very large amount of that billion dollars would be for that. That's, that's the Senate proposal. Uh, there's no agreement on that yet, and I don't know how close they are because at this stage of the thing, even an hour or two hours. And I would say that's mainly it on the on kind of that spending side. But the other thing is a um, big issue for us is the police. If you can't be safe in your home or in your car or on the streets, it's hard to have a strong economy. And you got to have law enforcement. You've got to have our police, sheriffs. They got to be on the street. They got to be active. They got to be working. They got to be empowered. And so that's a big part of that. And right now in the conference committee, uh, the Democrats lead uh, said law enforcement, anything to do with that is off the table. He doesn't want to talk about that. So we're hoping to bring them along, though, because that's just a very, very totally key component of what we have to have in public safety. The other piece of that spending in health and human services has to do with nursing homes and people with disabilities. Uh, they are in a very extremely tight budget. Their wages are set and it's uh, insufficient uh, and it's putting at risk nursing homes. About 40 of them might be closing in rural Minnesota unless they get some money out of this health and human services budget. That's really, really important. Also people with disabilities that's kind of a big picture um, for the. When you think of it, what I'm talking about here is $8 billion of money. Uh, I said so quickly as I went shopping one time in Walmart after all this budget work and I saw the 1.69 and I realized 
that's one dollar and sixty nine cents because you start working millions and billions. It's um, but it's important because it represents people, the people of Minnesota and the needs that they have. That's that's what's really this is about. Senator Osmick, of course, as president of the Senate, you are, um, you know, watching this uh, unfold. Uh, maybe you could give us your perspective on the agreement and some of the issues that you think are still outstanding uh, and any other observations you might want to share with us. Well, I serve on the, uh, strangely enough, I serve on the Judiciary uh, a Conference Committee, and we've been listening to a lot of the advocates for any number of uh, public safety and uh, judiciary uh, issues. One of the big issues on the judiciary sub uh, uh, conference committee is making sure that, and strangely enough, uh, making sure that judges and our judicial branch is properly funded. Um, that's uh, it's not to say that they aren't, but it's making sure that they do keep up with inflation. Um, one of the additional items that we're looking at too in the in the conference committee is making sure that. We're investing uh, public funds into programs that work, not into programs that are nice to have. So I know what I mean by that is things uh, things that, that are referred to as as, um, as uh, criminal or or, or uh, violence disruptors. Uh, these are not certified individuals. They are not people that have been trained uh, in public safety. And as far as I'm concerned, that's not a wise investment because you're not investing it in people that understand how to work the public safety realm and make sure that we do actually spend money in the proper way. Um, you know, right now that the Senate on Monday provided a global agreement that met the requirements of our leadership, the House and Senate leadership determined how much extra money we could spend beyond our current biennium. I mean, right now, uh, all branches, all functions are funded. Um, this would be new money or additional money for single uh, single time opportunities, such as cybersecurity, such as, uh, you know, individual projects that may have some wor something, some worthiness. Um, you know, the Senate provided a global offer in the afternoon on Monday. And unfortunately, our friends in the House are unable to be able to put together a package. And that, that's unfortunate uh, that, that we may get out of this session without having additional support for our law enforcement officers and for public safety in Minnesota because the House is unable to perform their function and be able to live within the budget constraints that we have under the agreement of both the House and Senate leadership. So I'm hoping we can get out of this. Uh, I also am working, uh, I was on transportation um, and I'm hoping we can get our auto sales tax fully funded into transportation as opposed to only a portion of it. Uh, there's a lot of roads and bridges that need to be done. And uh, I think we should be able to get out, get that hammered out. Um, but we are under constraint. We must be done by 11.59 a, a p.m. on Sunday. And we haven't yet to see a bonding bill and it's you know, the time is getting late. So. Uh, do I think we're going to have a special session? I don't know, um, but uh, if we need to, we need from that. Unfortunately, special sessions have turned into unspecial sessions because it seems like every year we're doing this. But uh, I, I believe with a global agreement, uh, chairs can get the work done, uh, but sometimes it may take a little extra time. But I, I think we can, especially with the budget that we have and the additional resources we have. We can get those tax cuts and we can do investments, wise investments in helping Minnesotans. So I think we can get it done. But you now until we know, you know we'll, we'll stay tuned until Sunday afternoon and Sunday evening. Yeah, I think I misled our viewers. I said 12.59 on Monday, but uh, that's actually the last day of the session. The work has to be completed by 12.59 on Sunday. So you've got one fewer day to get your work done. So, uh, you know, we'll have to get cracking on that. Um,